Good morning. Oi. Hello everybody, it's me Cecilia and I live on Svalbard, an island close to the North Pole. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. Today is a sit down video with me and Christopher and Grimm. As my channel grows, which is really exciting by the way, I really appreciate these sit downs once in a while to kind of get up to speed and catch up with you. Some of you may be very familiar with me and have hung around here on my channel for a while so you know a bit about Svalbard. And some of you have never even heard of this island before. So today we're gonna sit down and go through some questions that I got from you guys and just have a nice cabin cozy chat. So let's start. Oh, good morning. Good morning. How are you today, darling? Very good. Very good. Today, we are gonna do a Q&A, which we haven't done in a really long time. I don't know when was the last time. Hmm. We're gonna do our best not to repeat questions, but we've had a lot of new people, so maybe some questions will be repeated before. Just, we're gonna try not to repeat. Hmm. And we've asked for questions this time on YouTube. Yes. And I had a look and it's a little bit of oh, everything. So we are gonna see what we have here. We are in our cozy jumpers because we've had a snowstorm all night. It's been quite windy and whatever, 18 meters per second something. A little messy outside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the questions that have the most likes, that most people want us to answer, and we'll go through them. During polar night, are you ever worried when walking, Grim, that there might be polar bears you can't see? Yeah, of course, you always think about it. But it's not so very often it is polar bears around where we live, but yeah, can happen, so. Well, I think we know that it can happen while walking the dogs. I'm not, I'm never scared, but I'm very respectful and I realize that, okay, I need to look around. I need to look at how Grim behaves, but I don't walk around scared. I listen to my podcast, I have my headlight, and also Grim will notice something. He has a very good sense of awareness when it comes to animals. He might not know what to do with it if he meets or senses a polar bear. Last time, he wanted to go inside. So, I mean, that's also good. We don't want him to try to take on a polar bear. And again, it's never happened in our eight years of living here. So, four years of living in the cabin. No. So far, good. And does Long Your Bin have a designated storm shelter area for people who don't feel safe staying in their homes during a bad winter storm? Um, we don't have storm shelters, uh, but there's actually, when there's a really bad storm, there are some areas in the village that are prone to avalanche danger. So they will actually be evacuated during a, a bad storm. And what happens then is when we lived in the village, you were said to get an evacuation buddy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Which means somebody who lives in a safe zone. Mm. And you have to go to them and stay in their apartment <laughs> during a bad storm when the village has evacuated you. So you would go to your storm buddy and if you didn't have a storm buddy, I think they could provide uh, somewhere to stay, right? I think probably the hotel. I think the hotel, yes. But what what often happens in those occasions is somebody would like, people are so nice up here. I remember when we had a really bad storm, people who were living in the safe area and had extra bedrooms would write on Facebook and say, we have two bedrooms. So if anybody's evacuated and don't have anywhere to stay, please come to us. And people would have like dinners and like, if anybody isn't at home and can't eat today, please come to us. We have dinner for every, like for five extra people. Like, I love that about the village. Whenever we have a little bit of like a bad weather or, you know, some sort of crisis, everybody comes together. And we've had some really bad storms. So weather can be very brutal, but um, the village rallies together. The worst storm that I've been through is probably the one we had where we couldn't close the door almost that day. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but everything, our house completely kept up. We lost a windshield to one of the snowmobiles because the wind turned all the way around in less than what, 20 minutes. It was oh. wild. We I think we lost a little bit more outside under, under the roof. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Your approach to the simple things of everyday life are so refreshing. Uh, is there any particular food, sport, or activity you miss by not being in a more urban environment? You can take this one. Uh, but food. Yeah, you always miss food. Oh. You know? The summer is definitely something that when you're on the mainland, you can always go pick strawberries, corn, fresh vegetables everywhere. And <laughs> I miss the vegetables. Like oh, yeah. The summer vegetables when you pick it at a farm. Yeah. Because that, that one has so, so much better taste than that. But when you go down to the mainland, you can always go to a lot of places to eat and, and that we do that. Yeah. If for some reason you could no longer live on Svalbard, where do you think, uh, as in the entire family, you would make your move? I think Portugal is right up there. I've been thinking, like, I, I don't want to move from here in a long time. And I think I always want to have this as our base, but I think it's a good idea to kind of like, okay, where would we split our time? Because I think that's more where I am at. Like, where could we be half of the year if we don't want to be here every, like the whole year? And for me, I land on Portugal every single time because the people, the culture, the place, the accessibility, it's close to so many things. I just love Portugal. And it's also not too hot and I, don't, I love Portugal. Oh. And my parents are there, so I'm there so often that I've gotten such a good idea about the country. And I think also the safety, the fact that it's such a safe country. No, I would also like to stay in Norway somewhere. Yeah, that's all. Oh, yeah, of course. So, okay, so Norway is yours. Your no. pick. Nah, not pick, but it's one of them. It's Yeah, mine as well. Norway is definitely on there. I could so have a cabin you know, and live there. Or I could live in, you know, somewhere where it's close to nature as well. Because mm. Norway's beautiful. What do you think about Portugal? Is that also on your list? No, it's a nice place. Super nice to stay there. What is your daily life like when the camera isn't going and you don't need to worry about content making? Is it the content we see or is it created especially for us? And most of it is what we do. <laughs> channel came from just what we're doing and that being the focus i never said oh i'm just gonna do something to film it i said okay i'm doing this i might as well bring a camera and that's how this channel was born oh so but now that we're you know been doing this for three years i'm trying to find a little bit more stuff to show you guys but it's a mix but 99 percent of the stuff we do we we just bring you along on something that we're doing Okay, I have two questions. Do you think they might be expanding the town, building new places to live and stores, etc., in the future? I don't think that's ever going to happen. That's 100% sure it's not going to happen. It's not going to be any bigger. Yeah, and I think that also answers another question where somebody asks, uh, do you think now that you have this channel that it's going to be become overpopulated here or something? We have a limit on how many people can live here because we have a limit on housing. That's already full since years back. It We've was had, already full when I moved here. Yeah, so 10 years ago, there it was maxed out. And that is the same thing now. And they have actually removed some houses due to some issues with the uh, safety of them. So we've gotten less housing. And then they built some new, but it's only to make up for it and make better housing for the people already living here. Yeah. So they have very strict regulations on how big the village is gonna be. There's still a lot of space. They are not gonna use it. They are not giving out any more lots for cabins. There's a plan for Longyearbyen that has been for decades and they don't really, they don't prioritize either tourism or um, building, like building out the village. Right now, I think their focus is just containing it and making it as green as possible no. and keeping the nature preserved. So they're putting in a lot of different nature laws and restrictions on where we can go and stuff like that to keep the Arctic kind of pristine. But they won't be, no, they're not gonna, there's no risk of overpopulation. And like, we have the jobs that are available. There's, you can always move here, but you, you kind of have to like wait until there's a few jobs available. That's what it often is like. Yeah, and I think today it's more you have to have a place to stay, an apartment, yeah. and that's almost impossible to get. Yeah, the apartment is uh, the most difficult thing. Like when we were looking at an apartment, I think people misunderstood. 
our point was that we might buy an apartment and then lease, like rent it out to a person in the village, like a normal rent, yeah. and would, which would actually make it just not easier, but it was already been rented out by a private person. But that was our just goal with it, not to do anything else. We didn't want to live in it, but that would probably make it easier because buying an apartment is difficult. No. Yeah. So, but we're, we're, we gave up on that. The prices are completely crazy at the moment. They're so high. Okay, even though you've gone through many polar nights, what is something that still amazes you and Chris and you are still shocked or surprised by? To be fair, every year that we go into the polar night, I know what's coming. So the first day when we wake up and it's pitch black all day, I'm still a little bit shocked by it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I'm surprised what? how fast it goes. Yeah. Well, fast into the polar night or out? Both. Yeah. No, but, but, but It's a out, quick season. I think it could be longer. I, I agree. I love polar night. Oh, the people with seasonal depression. How do we battle things like that? The thing is like, like you move to this place and if you don't like it, you move back. This is not a temporary place that you live all your life. Most, like 99% of the people. You have a small population who's been born here and live, still living here. And many people who live there a long time. But you move here, work here, and then go back to where you come from or another place. So, I see people who move here and stay one week. It's not for me and I move back and some people stay here for 10, 15 years and they said, nah, it's enough. I move. So like we don't, it's not, it's a little bit like, it's not a real community. It's a real community, but you can always move from here. Yeah. And you it's move, a you move here and you move back. There's so many things you can do to just change your mindset. And I don't mean like toxic positivity where you're like, oh, it's amazing, but you hate it but trying to find good things you like about it. And I think the darkness has so many positives about it. You just need to kind of open your eyes a little bit. I think we're so, so many people are wired on summer being the only season that's good. And I am so wired the other way <laughs> that I think you can learn a lot from just trying to find different things you like about another season. Do you think Grim would have a good or bad reaction if you got a new puppy? I have actually changed my mind on this one. From the beginning, I thought I would want to get a puppy early. I don't want to do that to Grim. Nah, I think he, I think he likes to be alone. Yeah. He's here, by the way, and he's not even moved, <laughs> sleeping. I don't want to do that to him. I want him to be the only dog and enjoy that calm and silence. And I see Grim when I take him to friends who have dogs. He played for five minutes and then he just go away and yeah, lays under the table. Yeah, he's not much of a yeah. He, he he likes his own space. Like he needs to live his whole life first, and then I could think about having another puppy. Because oh. I, I couldn't, and also he has so many weird things about him. If he spreads his fear of floors <laughs> to a new puppy, it's over. Like we can't have another dog scared of floors in our cabin. Oh, come. Oh, we woke you. Oh, here comes sleepy. Yeah, come in. Yeah, come. Go with the little bean. Yeah, come from the teal. Here. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, daddy, do ya? We were just talking about you. We said only nice things. We won't get you a puppy. <laughs> You're not getting a puppy for Christmas. Okay, will you do Vlogmas this year? We are gonna do the Christmas baking, uh, which means I get D-R-U-N-K. You can't hear that word. <laughs> it's not for babies. I'm gonna get glug. Uh, I'm gonna drink mulled wine and have the best time of my life and Christopher's gonna bake. And we're gonna see if he's gonna allow me to bake something. That's happening this year. I think I might also do a vlog week during, not Christmas, but before. Ooh. So we're gonna see, but we have lots planned. Um, what are the horizontal parallel lines on the mountain behind town? Socketoppen. Avalanche oh. uh, fences to protect the village from avalanches that have happened on the mountain and that have, ha uh, have killed two people and also ruined houses. So they don't want that to happen again. 
How did you guys become such fans of Tractor Supply? Okay, so I... This is how it began. I started dating Christopher ages ago now. I was visiting my sister who lives in America. We have to first explain this. In Sweden, America has always been a little bit of Disneyland for us. Which means when I was younger and I went there with my family, my biggest dream was to get a Starbucks cup because that was what was cool back then. <laughs> or the I Heart New York t-shirts or I Heart. That was like, if you came back to Sweden with that, it was the co coolest thing you could have. Also, if you go to H&M in Sweden now, we have your schools on sweaters. We have fake merch because we, in Sweden or in Europe, I should say, it's a trend. So we have Harvard merch in, in H&M and you know, like it's a thing. So when I went to America, I was like, well, my boyfriend is a wood chipper man. He's a mountain man. I need to get him something mountain-esque. <laughs> and I had been in a tractor supply with my little sister before and I was like, I love everything about this. So I went into Tractor Supply and I'm like, they have the best hats. So I'm gonna buy him some because I feel like that's gonna suit his personality and his kind of style. Also love that it's such a random thing that nobody else has. That's what I felt, like especially here in Europe. It's not a name brand. It's not something like Carhartt cool. It's like nitty gritty American. First, I only got like uh, two caps, I think, your heads. Yeah, we started with the collection with two and now we have about 22. <laughs> and Bass Pro is cool. Bass Pro, oh yes, Bass Pro, which is now Cabela's, I guess. But Bass Pro is cooler. Cabela's just doesn't feel as cool. I like the branding for yeah. Bass Pro. Uh, I really enjoyed the two videos about living in Svalbard with children. Can you make a video about education and how life is primary school kids? I can't because filming kids and putting children on the internet is one, something that I'm not very comfortable with. Also, you can't film in schools. The, the video we did with Arvidas was because we know them and they wanted to share this. And we did it in a very, you know, easy way where it's focused on the parents. It's very difficult to do those kind of videos when the planning stage and also when we were filming at the kindergarten that was a fully like a thing that we needed permission for we had to email we had to show what we're doing we had to show an edit like it requires a lot to be able to only use i think it was 30 seconds of footage not even from that place every single parent had to be approved of like approving of this idea so i just don't feel like that's something that we like it's a great thing to it would be so interesting, but if it's a little bit too difficult, to be honest, especially for like a one-man show on YouTube like this is, it's, it's too difficult. Can't film in school, can't film any other kids. Like you have to be very mindful of it. And also our rules here in Norway, which is what I have to follow, is a lot different than uh, America, for example. Like when it comes to, let's say something is alcohol, I can't even show a beverage bottle while in America you can drink and you can show and everything. Like we have completely different laws and rules. So I have to follow that. Norway have super strict laws against like to film children. Minors, or Minors yeah. or every... So was, like we couldn't film anything on uh, the kindergarten. Nothing. Place. So was... we, the, what we showed and what we filmed was pre-approved by a lot of people like sent in footage, uh, edits and you know. So also we, we don't get that as often now, probably because we've answered it so many times. Like if we want kids, I still don't know. I love that you're behind me to have to do this. Uh, kids, I, kids is up to you. Yeah, Christopher says it's up to me, which I find is perfect because I think if he had a strong will either or, that couldn't work. I remember when we got together, the first thing I asked, since there is an age difference of 13 years, I said, do you want kids? And he said, I'm up for it. And that's all I needed. I needed to know that I could have kids if I wanted to. I said, if you want. Yeah, that's what yeah, I said. Yeah. Like, if you want to, I'm up for it. Like, if you no. want to, sure, I'm, you know, I'll do it. I just don't know. Um, I'm turning 34 this year, so I feel like I still have time to choose, of course. Uh, in Sweden, it's quite normal to have kids well after 30. I know in other places as well, but I'm just speaking from Sweden Sweden, and what I'm used to. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have a big desire to have kids, but I, I'll see if it changes. 
I think if we would have kids, it probably would end up being one, considering my age. But I don't know. Also, who knows if we even can have kids? That's also another thing to think about. But I think it's important. You never know. No. Never know if you even can have kids. So if I decide that I want to have a kid with Christopher and we should have a family with a child, we have a family with a dog, I hope that I can have a child if we do decide to have one. So I don't know. Oh, speaking of that, do you ever feel like you're missing something by not having kids? So I feel the other way around. I feel that a child could disrupt my already really enjoyable life. <laughs> when you live up here, it's another yeah. safety issue, how you <laughs> walk around and everything. And when you go on trips, and if you have a child, then you have to step up that game. Every, I don't think this life is as doable and enjoyable with a child. And I think that's what the fear is. It's not like I love kids, like I love babies. I don't mind that at all. It's the whole thing of living here the way we do and the way that might not be as enjoyable with a child. So I don't think if you don't want kids that I don't think you're missing anything. Not that it's wrong to have kids. I think both lives are completely fine. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I feel both options in my life could be amazing, but it's just like what I would choose for us. And I don't have to see a child in my future. If I look at just us two getting old together, that is perfect in my world as well. So I still, I'm on the fence. Like, But at the same time, I could equally show up next year and be like, look, we had a baby. <laughs> That's like... I have no idea, so I'm not gonna rush to anything. But at the moment, it's more towards no than yes. <laughs> What's the significance of the tattoo on your finger? We have... <laughs> we have a black cat and we have a lightning bolt. <laughs> Great decisions were made. Um, no, I actually love them. Uh, there, I don't have any significance. A lightning bolt, I love Harry Potter and everything that has to do with it. Black, oh, they do have significance. Black cats, I used, I love black cats only. Uh, I actually got this tattooed on Friday the 13th. I didn't even know. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's a interesting choice. I'm like, I love black cats. They're gorgeous. So that's what they are. I was a cat girl before Grimm came into my life. Uh, I had two cats, Pixie and Peaches. I, I stole Bob Geldof's daughter's names. Do you know that? No. He has kids with the weirdest names. He has Pixie is one, Peaches is one, Heavenly Hirani Tiger Lily, that's one. Then we have Fifi Trixie Bell. That's <laughs> These are humans, human beings with these names. I aspire to be this crazy to name humans Fifi Trixie Bell. They were adopted by my then boyfriend's mother who were watching them. So they are living their best life ever. So the, everything turned out well because you can't have cats here because they are banned from the island. But before Grimm came into my life, I was a cat girl. Christopher also had a cat. What was her name? Awkward. Bisa. Bisa. It is up. We want to say thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> no, but we really, really appreciate you. This is now, I think, the fourth polar night, and I'm more excited than ever. If I look back at all my videos, I've had a different gear, different experiences, different jobs. Yeah, Grim, are you okay? You want to go outside. He wants to go outside. Morning walk. Yes. But thank you so much for watching. Check out our recipe guide. There will be a baking one coming up. I'll put in some footage. Look at those cookies. Look at those buns. Look at those. What else do we have? Look at that goodness. Tastiness. Look at that tastiness. Christopher's also He's naming the recipes and so far we've got, oh, chocolate tasty yum yum. I'm like, yeah, no, we can't do that. So one will probably be called chocolate yum. 
<laughs> if Christopher's deciding. But so that's gonna be coming out. We also have Patreon. Thank you, sir, for attending today's Q&A. Thank you. I love you. Uh, we're matching. Um, we love you guys. See you. Bye bye. Next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. Bye. Hello. Just that. Du måste ju faktiskt börja säga på svenska. Okej. Okay. Ha det. Hejdå. Hejdå. <laughs> Grim, kom och säg då. Kom. Titta här. Här, titta här. Kolla här. Ser man honom? Ja. Titta här. Kolla här.